Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our first webinar in our new series called WISP Next Gen Presents, Discover Sports Tech. Um, so just a little bit of background, Women in Sports Tech is a global nonprofit organization founded just three years ago with the mission to drive growth opportunities for women in the sports tech industry and introduce students to the wide and exciting variety of careers in the sports tech business. Today we launch our newest initiative, WISP Next Gen, a new WISP program that inspires young women like all of you to continue the STEAM classes you love, you love and encourage your continued participation in the sports you're passionate about at the same time. Uh, we'll introduce you to role models in sports tech careers you may never even heard before. Um, so I'll have our team do a quick intro. We wanna start with you, Sydney. Hi everyone, I'm Sydney. Um, I'm a student of the University of San Francisco Sport Management Master's Program in San Francisco, California. Um, I also am a social media specialist for my program. Um, I am also a WIST 2020 fellow um, for this past summer um, where I just wrapped up an internship as a data analyst with Zoomf. Um, I was first introduced to the WIST team through my grad program where I met Mary Lou, the founder of WIST, um, who came to speak to us. I was already subscribed to receive their newsletters and information, um, and then I applied for the fellowship. Um, this community is very important, um, and it, it gives other companies the option to, the opportunity to change the ratio. Um, so putting women and women of different backgrounds in places where we can excel and where we should be. Awesome, thanks Sydney. Uh, just a, a quick intro about myself. I've been with WIS for about a year as a volunteer. Um, helped uh, start our, la our webinar, WIS Presents, how I got into sports tech webinar series and um, helping out with WIS Next Gen as well. So really excited to be here. Um, I work at Catapult Sports, which is a wearable tech company. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I really have. Shivy, you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shivy. I'm a junior in high school um, in Massachusetts right now, and I'm one of the co-founders of this initiative. Um, currently, I'm also the founder of the engineering design program. We engineer innovation, or we innovate for short, and I'm a softball player. So I'm really, really excited to spread the concept of sports tech, not only to those who are viewing this webinar live, but to everyone who will also be viewing the recording later on. Um, and I definitely feel like it's important to abolish the myth that athletics and technology are on opposite ends of the spectrum. So I'm really excited for the amazing women and men, um, like the speaker we have today, to inspire younger generations to pursue a career in sports tech. Awesome. Thanks, Shivy. Um, and then today we have Kendall as our, our guest today. She's the Vice President of Strategy and Analytics at Seattle Kraken. Um, so Ke Kendall is one of our WISP board members and she was on one of our previous webinar series. Um, but I know everyone's going to leave today feeling inspired and, and ready to study hard to get into an exciting career in sports tech. Um, so welcome Kendall. Great to have you on. Yeah, just echoing Lydia. Thank you again, Kendall, for joining us today. Um, We'll start off by, if you don't mind, introducing yourself um, and then talking a bit about the field that you work in and especially the brand new NHL team in Seattle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I grew up uh, in Eden Prairie, Minnesota and grew up an avid sports fan. Um, I played soccer, basketball and lacrosse in high school. Uh, but was always, you know, a fan of, of hockey. Um, in Minnesota, you know, we call it, we say it's the state of hockey. And so um, it was a place where, you know, I think similar to how people think about Florida and football or Texas and football, that's how Minnesota is about its hockey teams. So the high school hockey team is, you know, the the, the, big, the big team on, on campus when it comes to, to school. And so I attended many games and, and knew the game well. Um, I would say that, you know, my journey in sports was certainly not linear. Um, and I think that's just a really, you know, important piece to think about. I played basketball uh, in college, but from a, a work perspective, you know, I, I worked at Dick Sporting Goods um, just in their team sports department, you know, selling 
uh, tennis rackets and basketball hoops uh, during the summers and mostly teaching myself how to juggle. So, but was, you know, kind of involved <laughs> there. Um, and then in, in school, I, in college, I played basketball. Um, but my, from a career standpoint, you know, I was looking much more um, towards engineering. And so I was an engineering major um, at Georgia Tech and then went on to do consulting. Uh, I was a consultant for four years before going to business school. And it wasn't until business school that I decided to make that uh, transition into sports. Uh, interned with the Ladies Professional Golf Association. And then uh, I got a job with Top Golf, uh, which brought me here to Seattle. And it was a uh, chance meeting between my brother uh, and the president and CEO of the Seattle Kraken at an open skate and an ice rink here in Seattle that uh, got the introduction meeting between myself uh, and the president and CEO to, to pitch my, my current role. So uh, it has certainly been a journey and, and I would say, you know, you don't have to uh, know from the very beginning what you, what you want to do and it's okay to explore and learn in lots of different areas um, before, you know, finding your way back to sports if that's your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know you spoke a little bit to how sports um, impacted you whenever you were um, in the rise of your career. How do those experiences impact your work life today? Yeah, I would say, you know, first is accountability. Um, you know, when you play uh, a sport, whether an individual sport or a team sport, you recognize, you know, that you have to put in your own work and your own efforts um, to get, you know, to get things done and to accomplish things. I would say also the impact of knowing how your actions affect the team. Um, so while, you know, while I was playing basketball, for example, if you decide to stay up late and you don't get a ton of sleep and then the next day you have a game and you're really tired, right? Like that, you know, affects your performance and that affects the overall team and the results of the team. I would say similarly in my work life now uh, that I, I see that all the time too, right? Which is, you know, if I don't bring my A game or I'm tired or I don't keep, I'm not drinking enough water or eating or, you know, whatever it may be, if I can't bring my best self, then that hurts the, hinders the performance of the team overall, right? So if I'm not thinking clearly or, you know, I see something like a, a PowerPoint and I'm really tired so I don't see a typo or I don't see that the numbers don't add up correctly, uh, then that's a miss on my part, right? We're not, I'm not bringing my best self uh, to the organization in that and the organization and the team uh, suffers because of it. So. I would say those, you know, those two factors uh, definitely go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it goes to what we've been taught by our coaches and we are only as strong as our weakest link um, type of mentality. Um, what has your journey taught you about sports tech as a broad field? Oh man, I would say first, there's so many things you can do. Oh, it's, it's so cool. Um, I, I will say I will, um, I'll date myself uh, a little bit and, and say, you know, when I was in high school, the only sport, women's sports that were on TV specifically was women's basketball, college basketball. And you could see um, they would play like the semifinal games of the final four and the championship game. And then they might play one other, you know, Tennessee versus UConn rivalry. And nowadays, when I think about and see all the different collegiate sports that are on TV, specifically women's, like softball, gymnastics, basketball, track and field. I mean, there's so, so many places that women are represented on, on TV. And then to see and think about, wow, like, there's a lot of technology that goes into it that these athletes are in a prime spot to, to learn about, right? 
you know, social media has certainly gone, you know, on the rise and how are female athletes using their social media platforms um, to portray themselves and portray a, a positive message, right? How are uh, women, how are these women athletes um, utilizing uh, video, you know, things like programs like Twitch or highlight reels or things like that. I mean, all of that and, how, you know, putting it together to create little packages for themselves. Um, you know, those are all kind of just on the precipice of what this is to come, right? We see it a lot in the professional men's sports, but I think it's just such going to be really, really cool when it comes to women's sports. And that's just on the sports side. The side that I would say also just really opened my eyes was the side I'm on, which is the business side, where you start to think about analytics and you start to think about what were the financial impacts of things that are happening. Um, you know, looking at, I would say, you know, a lot of the modeling and analytics that's being has been done in the past is based off of men and men's sports. And there's a whole new wave of what's to come when you think about women's sports and what does, how do we grow those games, right? Do the same analytics and the same strategies that worked for the men, can you just port them over and do it and do it for the women? And I think that's still to be determined. And I think that's what's just really exciting about what's to come when it, you know, in terms of the sports industry and technology and such a really great place for women to uh, step in and say, you know, we don't want to just use the old model. Like we can come up with a model that's specific and works for us. Um, an example I will give is um, player tracking, right? In sports like uh, soccer or hockey, things like that. These just make like one version and the model is typically based off of men. Well, now it's like, okay, but you know, women's heart rates, women's bodies function very differently than men's. So when you think about, you know, heart rate, elevation, um, where are they in ranges that could be scary, right? Is they're not all the same. And I think that's just such a, a cool thing that we're really just starting to get started on is making some of this stuff really unique to women. And that's exciting. Yeah, for sure. Your journey is so inspirational and how you got here is like crazy, especially in such a field that has taken a while to get women into it. Um, but taking it back a little bit to some of these younger girls who are in this uh, webinar, um, in high school and college, what classes and extracurriculars do you think really prepared you for like your career and your journey? Well, first I would say, you know, definitely playing sports uh, is, is a huge, <laughs> is a huge component. Um, but I will also then say, you know, I think being in any sort of group activities, you know, I, I would say the days of you get to just kind of put your head down and do your own work uh, are tend to kind of, are kind of going away, right? It's pretty much everything I do is in a team. You know, even if it is a team of two, you're always working with somebody else. And so any sort of classes or extracurriculars where you have to work on projects, I would say that's always uh, key. And I would add that any, and this is, it's always hard because, you know, you can often choose your own team. Any time that you can really push yourself to be in a class where you don't get to choose your own team and you have to work with people who you may not be best friends with or you may not necessarily have the same working style or one of you might want to stay up late and do work and one of you is an early riser, you know, practicing working with people who don't align with you um, or agree on everything with you is is really important in terms of the uh kind of extracurriculars you know i think anything where you're presenting whether that's presenting to um, the teachers or presenting to faculty or presenting to the class 
that's always important. You know, I remember like my stomach would just churn when I <laughs> had to do presentations. You know, you're just kind of, you know, the night before you're just like, oh, I just don't feel good. Those don't feelings know. don't go away. I, <laughs> <laughs> they don't go away and it's okay. You know, I think the thing is it's, it's almost just like the before you play a big game. The way I like to think about it is if I'm not nervous about it, then it's, then I'm not giving it its due uh, attention and it's, it's due seriousness, right? Like that, you should be a little bit nervous because you should be giving anytime you're about to put yourself out there and give your absolute best. It's a little bit nerve wracking, whether it's a sport or a presentation. So I would say, you know, anytime you can do that and practice those presentation skills, that's, that's huge. Um, you know, PowerPoint, uh, Excel, if we're talking about like practical skills, um, PowerPoint is, is a huge piece of, of the work I do. Excel um, is another big piece of, of the work I do. And, you know, you don't have to be a, a macros expert on it, but, you know, to be able to make a table, use pivot tables to do, um, you know, algebraic math, just, you know, in Excel versus like on a calculator or on a piece of paper, um, I think would, is, is definitely valuable. For sure. Um, what, are there any opportunities or classes that you might um, have wished that you took that could have really prepared you for this journey or um, where you ended up? I don't know that it's, yeah, that's tough. I don't think it's, and I will say like I, when I was in these programs, like a lot of this technology wasn't necessarily at the forefront as, as it is, but I would look at pro, so programs like Tableau is something that offers like free online instruction that you can do and kind of play around with. You know, I would say, you know, I wish I was exposed to a program like Tableau a little, you know, earlier than I was. Um, you know, I would say Excel um, is, you know, is another one that if, if that's, you know, if you're really interested in like numbers and data and finance, I would say that's one. Um, if you're interested in like coding, there's lots of books and um, courses out there related to SQL. So on our side, so data, all of pretty much all the teams and everything from the league, everything is stored in these big databases. So you'll hear a lot about, you know, data and what is everybody doing with big data? And all of it is essentially controlled and, and managed through a program called SQL. Um, and if you're looking to spell it out, it's just capital SQL. And so um, if you're you know, interested in the data side of things and analytics, I would say uh, that's another kind of course or program that I would uh, keep an eye out on. Awesome, yeah, it's, I think um, we just put it in the chat there for anybody who wants it. But um, for thinking a little bit more like really school related, how, how would you recommend um, girls deal with uninspiring coaches or teachers, or like in other words, how do you kind of take charge of your own interests at like a young age? Yeah, I mean, I think I would say you will encounter uninspiring people all throughout your life. Um, and so it's kind of just something you have to work through. And the way I went about it is by finding those side passions that interest me. Um, and so even if um, it, whether if it was a coach or, or a teacher, um, you know, that just wasn't, we didn't kind of see eye to eye, I would find kind of little side projects that piqued my interest and kind of, you know, kept me thinking uh, on things. So one of the things I did uh, early on was I taught myself Java um, and like a little bit of like kind of coding. And so that was, you know, just a way to kind of es escape and learn something new, things like that. And then I would say, you know, when it comes to playing, I always liked working out kind of on the side. <laughs> so if, if it wasn't, you know, if I wasn't feeling like I was pushed or something like that, I would love, I always like to, 
go to the park and play pickup games or um, just go and, and challenge myself on, you know, different kind of things like to shooting or get together with my own friends and, you know, play harder, I guess, that kind of thing to, to make sure that I was still feeling challenged and that the competition, I was still feeling like I could compete. Yeah, that's so cool. I think a lot of um, girls can kind of relate to that, that feeling of needing to be inspired outside of like where you're currently at. Um, so kind of along that same vein, what are some goals that young girls right now looking to go into your field should kind of set for themselves as of like today, like right now? Hmm. I think, you know, I think the first step is thinking about, is thinking about college and thinking about how you continue to play your sport, even if it's recreationally, you know, I, you don't have to be on varsity. Um, you know, I think if, if you can continue and, and play recreationally, that's still such a huge um, added bonus to your experience uh, when you're, when you're thinking about, thinking about college. Um, I would say, Another goal I would, you know, is to think about where, what you like, you know, are, you know, we, we all, we like sports, but do you like finance and number, like kind of finance and money? Do you like coding and kind of the technology? Do you like social media? Uh, do you like TV and broadcasts or Twitch, like, do you like that, you know, kind of how you watch games? Um, do you like to, you know, kind of understanding what types of technology interest you? And it may be all of them, and that's okay, too. Um, but to just kind of, I would set a goal of learning kind of what each, what kind of each one does, right? So learning a little bit about, you know, sports and Twitter, or learning a little bit about sports and analytics, and kind of thinking, hmm, is that, am I a data person, or do I look at those numbers and think, no, nope, I'm okay, <laughs> somebody else can, can do that, or, you know, and or do you say, you know, oh, I, I'm really, I'm really into, you know, Instagram and, and Snapchat and TikTok, you know, what are, what's my favorite sports team doing as it relates to social media, right? And just kind of like, okay, that part's cool, or I would, you know, this part I would do a little bit differently, you know, so kind of find your, your areas that you think are, are interesting. I would, I would set that as a, as a goal as well. That's yeah. a really good point to be, make sure that you're exploring throughout that process. Because I think early on when I was in college, I, I thought I wanted to be a collegiate strength coach and that's all, like, that's all I had in my mind. And um, eventually I just explored, like opened up my eyes and saw different opportunities and realized areas that I had more strengths in. Which is yeah, like that's super important. I think especially because a lot of people aren't aware of like the intersections of sports and tech. When they think of sports and going into a career, they immediately think of like going pro. And I think it's really important, like you said, to kind of explore those different intersections when you're like in high school and in college. So you can kind of really figure out what you want to do. Um, and just to add really quick, it's yeah. also OK to pivot throughout your journey. Because um, whenever I started my sport management master's program, I I knew I wanted to work in sports, but in what realm, as you're saying, explore and think about what you want to um, go into. So I was thinking of operations because I had done that in the past. I was thinking of marketing and then digital media and the digital marketing sector. And that's what I've run with. And I'm happy that I'm in sports tech right now. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then another question kind of regarding school and being in high school and college um do you have i know you put sequel in the chat but do you have any like additional resources for girls who um might want to learn more or educate themselves on sports tech 
No, I think definitely, you know, subscribing to the WIST newsletters is definitely key because as you'll, you can listen to um, the webinars of different, of like what different women do, right? There's just so many kind of options out there. So that would be, um, that'd be one piece I would definitely uh, consider. Uh, the other one I would think about is there's a newsletter that you can, another newsletter you can subscribe to called Sportico. Um, and we can put that one in the news, in the um, chat as well. It's free. It just comes to your email and it's a, a summary of kind of like what's happening in sports tech uh, across, you know, professional, college, overseas, et cetera. Um, and so that's just another, um, another nice one to just kind of read from time to time when you get a chance. Great. Yeah, we'll follow up in an email too and outline those resources. Um, excellent. So we'll transition to more of the advice um, component of the webinar. So the first question I have for you is what advice do you have to girls who might want to break into these kind of careers? Yeah, my, I would say my first piece of advice is that exploration that we talked about is just kind of like thinking about uh, your favorite, pick your favorite sport or your favorite team and look at kind of all the different ways that they touch technology, whether it's their social media page, their digital pages, Sid mentioned marketing, um, you know, and email community, you know, marketing and email communications. Um, whether, you know, if you think, if you're thinking about analytics, you know, do they um, have any sort of like player tracking in your, you know, sport? And if so, like, what are some of the companies that, you know, do that and kind of reading about what they do? So that'd be my first piece of advice is kind of do some of that kind of exploration and um, just researching what different, you know, all the different areas that are um, available. And then my, my second piece of advice would be, as I mentioned, you know, just staying involved in sports. You know, I think the, the lessons just continue to, to continue to come, you know, high school, college, you know, whether you play your sport as, you know, varsity or on rec, um, just to continue to stay active and, and stay accountable when it comes to yourself and being accountable for, for team members and team performance. Um, all those things change as you continue to grow and evolve, evolve as a person. And I will say candidly, as you move out from living with your parents, it adds kind of a whole new um, personal accountability that you have to learn and, and really um, get through on your own. I don't know how this to, to really better say it, but um, you know, when, when you get there, you'll know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, sticking, sticking with sports and, and continuing to, to, to have that as a, a foundation is, is really beneficial. Definitely. Yeah. Def having that foundation is key. Cause I feel like if I'm ever feeling down, I just kind of look back at what I did in my sports career and how I can transfer that to my, um, working career right now. Um, next question I have, uh, what are three big things you wish you knew in high school that you now know? Oh, uh, three big things related to sports and career. Um, first, I would say would be echoing uh, Sid's point, it's okay to pivot. Um, I thought for sure I was going to be a physicist. And then I thought for sure I was going to be an industrial engineer. And then I thought for sure I was going to be a lifelong consultant. And as you can see, this trend has continued that nothing is for sure. Uh, and so I would say be okay with pivoting. Um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's totally okay to, to change your mind and switch. So that'd be first. Yeah, in high school, I had all these crazy ideas. I, I was like, oh, I'll be a greeting card writer. I'll be a dolphin trainer. <laughs> just interesting things. Because at the time, I didn't really know what I was. This is my strengths. And then over time, I discovered them. And um, yeah. not a greeting card writer right now. But 
You never know, I guess. Maybe in your future. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I was just shopping for a greeting card, and the competition is really <laughs> strong. It is, you yeah. probably right. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then what is a challenge you've experienced as a young woman, and how have you overcome that? Yeah, I would say, you know, I think one of the challenges that I've had to overcome is recognizing that the traits of women are valuable, that you don't have to be like men. Um, and you don't have to change who you are in order to have, have a position in sports or have a position um, in, in any career that you want. Uh, and so I would say, you know, just, you know, whether, you know, one of the things you talk a lot about is emotions, right? Or they talk, you hear a lot about being nurturing or, you know, too nice or something like that. You know, I think, you know, those, those traits that I would, you know, are that some women have, and it's okay if you don't, like, let's not all just, we're not going to generalize all women, but, you know, it is okay. And those, those things are very, very valuable. Um, it is valuable to show vulnerability and to have emotion and to be able to connect with people on an emotional level when it comes to your career. Um, you know, when, when I think, you know, we're in a tough and a challenging time right now with COVID and look, when people are getting furloughed, it, you want some emotional, do you want to, talk to somebody who's going to be able to talk to you and connect and be, you know, under recognize your emotions and listen to your emotions. And, um, you know, I, I would just say, you know, I was early in my career, I, I thought that I had to be like men in order to get to be like a CEO or to get to be, you know, higher up in my career. And, and that's just not the case. Um, you can be who you are and achieve those things. And uh, I think that's just really, really, really important um, that your traits and what you bring is really valuable um, to whatever organization you're a part of. I love that. And I think that's why I'm so grateful for WIS because I think that's helped me develop my voice as a woman because I work mostly with men at my company and at first just like kind of realized their thinking was very one dimensional. And um, I would just listen back on my sales call. It just didn't really sound like myself. And then as I got more comfortable with the role, I just kind of de developed my own, own voice and mm -hmm. it sounded much more natural <laughs> than what I was yeah. doing before. Um, excellent. And then how can girls identify what they want to do and boost their self-confidence to achieve those aspirations? I think it's uh, that research, you know, power of the internet these days you uh every you know i think if you have a a smartphone in your pocket right you could be researching careers in sports technology all day every day if you wanted to um and so i think you know utilizing those tools um for to research the different areas is key and the other piece i would say is watching sports and reading about sports, not just the like actual stats, but rec you know, things that are happening um, in, in the sports world and kind of staying up on, you know, what's, what's going on, right? We think about uh, the Washington football team is, you know, changing their name. That's a really big deal and really interesting. And there's a lot of technology pieces that will uh, have to go into that. Um, and I would say, um, yeah, I would say, yeah, the research kind of know what's going on in sports. Those would be kind of the big, the big two. And then we have our, um, our submitted questions next. Did you want to run with that, Shivi? Yeah, sure, in the Q&A section. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we have one question that is, how did you know what you wanted to pursue for your future? So I didn't. <laughs> and I think that's why, honestly, my journey was um, not a straight line. 
but I think because I didn't, I had a chance to do a lot of different things that add value to what I do now. Uh, and so I would say, you know, my management consult, my time in management consulting helped me be really comfortable and very good at making presentations to our board members um, with the Seattle Kraken. I was, you know, my um, time in engineering and physics may, you know, gave me the kind of analytical skills that I needed to now build, you know, financial and operational models in Excel uh, for our team. So figuring out how many tickets we should sell and what types of tickets, you know, should they be, um, you know, figuring out should we build this new um, piece of construction or should we, you know, should we not? So all of, I would say, you know, all those pieces of my journey kind of added up to helping me get to where I'm at today. Awesome. That's a really great answer. Um, we have one more question. It is, is this career path becoming more popular for women? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I would say there's, uh, you know, work to be done, but I would also say it's better than what it was. Um, I, was I can speak to at least here um, with the Seattle Kraken. Uh, we have about 100, just over 100 employees and 43% of those employees are women. Um, we have a goal set uh, to be for 45%. Uh, we have, um, let's see, of our, what we kind of call like our senior management team, so vice presidents, senior vice presidents, and above, um, we're over 25 to 30 percent, we're almost at 30 percent uh, women in that group as well. So, you know, those numbers are just really, really um quite frankly, impressive from a team perspective. Um, but I think that this is a wave to come of, of other teams and leagues as well. You know, I think more and more um, sports is recognizing that if they want to grow their audience and reach their audience, they need to have people uh, in their offices who look like those of the audience that they're trying to attract uh, and acquire. And that's why, you know, I say, like, my, to my, you know, previous point about bringing your whole self and recognizing that your voice matters, you know, you can add this type of perspective that, that just doesn't usually get said. And I'll say, you know, an example really quickly, we were talking about bathrooms in the arena, okay? If anybody's gone to a pro sporting event, as a woman, you know, that the women's bathroom line is always longer than the men's line, right? Like it just, it is, okay? We were in this meeting with myself and one other woman and the men at the table were talking about how they, you know, the line for the men's bathroom is so long. And we, you know, they were saying, oh, we should add more men's bathrooms than women's bathrooms. And myself and, you know, the other woman at the table said, hold on. <laughs> that just doesn't even biologically make sense. <laughs> you know, the process, it, it doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. There's no way. Everyone knows that the women's line is, is longer or every, we should say, every woman knows that the women's line is longer. But if you don't have the people sitting at that table to have the discussion, right, to say, for example, one of the hardships of when you go to a large women's restroom is you don't know if the stall is empty or occupied. And so we said, one thing that would be really great is if you could put like a little light at the top so that you didn't have, like, so that you could just see if it was like red, it was occupied, if it's green, you know, it's open. Those discussions would have never happened if we weren't sitting at the table. And you have to, you have to be there at the table but you also have to say something, right? And that's gonna be a huge component of, of our arena. It's gonna make, make a huge benefit for the value of not just women who come to the games, but all of the families, right? Like I can 
think I can think all the times that, you know, my husband has been like waiting outside the bathroom, you know, waiting for me, missing time watching the game because I'm <laughs> still in line. Right. And so it's going to make for an overall just great, better guest experience. And so I'd say, yes, more and more women um, are joining this, joining this field and not just joining it, but making a really big impact. And that's important too. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that's super inspirational, especially for all the girls in the webinar. We have another Q and A and it is, how do you deal with sexism in the workplace in a, in a professional way, especially when pursuing a male dominated career? Yeah. You know, I think it's something that I really think about. And I first think about finding allies and, it doesn't necessarily mean all women because there are male allies uh, out there as well. And you want to find someone that you can feel comfortable telling if something happens. And it's just, it's really, really important to say something. If you hear something or you see something or you personally experience something, it's really important to have those uh, allies in your work in the workplace who you can share that information with. And I think, you know, that's how kind of I've really, you know, dealt with it. And I've often kind of picked, you know, one female ally and, and often one male ally so that I can, you know, share that, um, share that piece and share that information and also, you know, get a sense of, okay, like, this is, this is how I'm feeling. This is what happened. You know, not going to, you know, no excuses, no hiding it. This is, you know, putting it out there. Um, and I think that's big. And then the other piece I would say is, you know, if it is something that's an HR related violation, you have to, you have to tell HR, you know, um, you, you have to tell them and, and you have to make sure it gets recorded um, as an, as an incident. Um, because that is, you know, just such a, an important piece uh, to how organizations do operate um, is through those kind of HR related reporting and infractions. And so, um, yeah, I would say, you know, first speaking with your, your allies um, and then following it up by speaking with, with HR if something happens. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think we're a little bit over time. So, just as we're wrapping up, I just wanted to say thank you again. I think we all wanted to say thank you. Um, it's been really amazing to hear you kind of speak about your journey into sports tech as a woman. Um, and it's, it's been really great just to kind of hear how inspirational you've been and hear some of your tips for younger girls. Um, just to reiterate, Kendall is the Vice President of Strategy and Analytics at Seattle Kraken. And um, yeah, thank you so much again.